the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul lifting messages, faith based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. We began to discuss it yesterday. He said, My son, the first requirement to host my glory, to host my power, is give me your heart not your offering not your preaching not your singing give me your heart i told you that what gives credence to your entire activity in this kingdom is the state of your heart not just the motions of the things that we do the kneeling down the rolling on the floor the jumping up the crying all of those things only find their value when your heart is sincere, broken, contrite. My son, give me your heart. Because whatever possesses your heart is your God. Whether or not you believe it, that which can find its way into that inner chamber called your heart has become your God. And then the second instruction that will be our teaching for tonight so step one give me your heart step two let your eyes observe my ways you want to host superior dimensions of the glory of God you want to bring territories under the influence of the Lordship of the Christ it says there is a dimension of your comprehension of my ways. God is a God of patterns. Please everyone say a God of patterns. In the wilderness when they began to build the tabernacle. The Bible records that every once and again God would come to Moses and beckon on Moses that the house be built according to pattern so God took Moses in a vision while he was up the mountain he had an idea and he saw the heavenly tabernacle and he was instructed to reproduce that pattern please listen and God kept coming to Moses to say ensure that the house is built according to pattern and when you read the glory of God never showed up until the last peg was hit according to pattern then the Bible says then the glory of the Lord came and tabernacled in that place and the priest could not even enter and minister so God is a God of patterns and the way he operates is that he never does the same thing twice please look up in the dealings of God with men the first thing he does is the example that man follows are we together now so every manifestation of his grace that is demonstrated in the earth realm in doing it he reveals the pattern for the continuity of that process for instance he's never had to create a man and a woman again in as much as we know when Adam was created and Eve was created a pattern are we together now so that when you want more men you subscribe to the pattern that makes for reproduction and if you get the pattern right then a child will come are we together the bible says god came and planted trees himself in eden he's not had to come to plant any tree again because a pattern was created that when the tree grows in it is the seed for its continuity so if you want to see more trees, you subscribe to the pattern that makes for multiplication of the trees. You will sow the tree to the earth. 
you don't throw a seed in the sky and it grows that seed must make contact with the earth because the pattern requires earth are, are we together now yes if you want to grow biologically there is a pattern for growth exercise well and eat and automatically you will grow it is a pattern if you want to grow intellectually there is a pattern expose yourself to a body of knowledge and continue to give yourself religiously to it and then you will find out that intellectually you are growing are we together there is a pattern that regulates agriculture on earth and especially within our nation here there is the rainy season and there is a dry season nobody has had to pray that god will change it there has not been any reason for it so rather than fighting to make rainy season dry season and dry season rainy season you plan your productivity along that pattern are we together if you must farm in dry season you will pay the price for farming at the time when rain is not coming by outsourcing an irrigation system to cover what would have come naturally because you are violating a pattern so you must create another wisdom strategy to find water are we together now but during rainy season you do not necessarily need irrigation because the season was designed to help you we have a very long journey this night so please in the name of jesus don't be tired are we together that god is a god of patterns his patterns make We clash cymbals, we play keyboard, we shout, we yell, and it doesn't seem to come. But the Bible talks about a man in the Bible called Job. That Job, at the height of his predicament, when he failed to find an explanation, his friends, Elihu inclusive, they came and attempted to bring an explanation as to why a man who felt he was righteous would be plagued by such predicaments. When men could not answer him, the Bible says that Job summoned God and God came. Now, what did Job say and what did Job do? Because God honored him. In fact, when Cain killed Abel, the Bible says God came to Cain. Cain was not praying for an encounter. God came and met Cain and Cain, if God spoke to you, will you answer him back that way? You will kneel down and say your majesty you even came to me but cain said am i my brother's keeper there was a pattern that ensured that the voice of god was not scarce that even in his rebellion that pattern was still honored please follow me tonight may god open our eyes in the name of jesus the nation of israel were given a spiritual pattern that every time their enemies overwhelmed them and it was clear that by the arm of flesh they would not prevail they were taught a chant the moment they begin to chant it the war will change must change the moment kings came together to fight the nation of israel if he was within their power they would fight and defeat them but where defeat was imminent they would stress back and begin to lift up that chant you are good and your mercy it was not a song it was a spiritual code when god hears that code from the earth it calls a dimension of him please sit down please sit down and understand what i'm saying so their enemies found out that whether they were few or many there was something they could do from the earth that would create a response from heaven do you know there is something a man can say on earth and you will die immediately listen listen please there are many people who have died today because of violating that pattern because they do not know 
May God deliver this generation from ignorance in the name of Jesus Christ. Did the wife of Job not look at him and say, curse God and die? So there is a kind of curse you bring towards God that you die immediately. How many times have you insulted God and yet you did not die? That means he was not just saying you are stupid or you are not God. There is something a man can utter. If that thing actually gets to the realm of the spirit, the consequence is that your life will leave you. So the Bible is a compendium of spiritual patterns that lead to several outcomes in a believer's life. Please listen to this. Many of the people who walked with God, in walking with God, stumbled across certain patterns and they archived those patterns and transferred it to a generation to say, in learning God, add this to your knowledge that this is the spiritual pattern that leads to this outcome. So when it gets to us now, we have the privilege of studying not just scriptures, but studying spiritual patterns that lead to certain outcomes. There were certain things men did on earth and it brought judgment to them. There were certain things men did on earth and it brought the mercy of God to them. There were certain things God did on men did on earth and overnight their lives changed. There were certain things men did on earth and it added 40 years of captivity. The goal is that in studying this, we will now understand what the Bible calls the ways of God. Everybody say the ways of God. The ways of God represent the methodologies of the kingdom. That God does not just operate haphazardly. Believers, listen to me. Please look up. There are two indices that measure spiritual growth and maturity. Two biblical indices measure growth and maturity. Number one, the first biblical index for measuring spiritual growth is your degree of conformity to the character of the Christ in experience. That is the first biblical index. So you say a man is growing spiritually not because of how long he has been in church. Not because of how long he has served in church. Uh -uh. Spiritual growth is measured number one by the degree of your conformity to the image and the character of the Christ in experience. My little children, Paul says, in whom I travail until Christ be formed in you. He was talking to believers who were already born again. Are we together? If you are together, say amen. amen. Number two, the second biblical index for measuring maturity is your depth of comprehending the mysteries of the kingdom. The degree to which you have been exposed to the secrets of the kingdom, the mysteries of the kingdom, these are the principles that translate into what we call dominion. Dominion is not an impartation. There is no grace in the Bible for dominion. Dominion, I would always say, is the resultant effect of your comprehending the mysteries of the kingdom. When you comprehend the mysteries of the kingdom, it will translate into authority. And then you will be able to command dimensions of results that are not given to men. Is God speaking to us? So two people can be born again. Watch this. Born again the same day. But then the degree to which they are exposed to the accurate understanding of the mysteries of the kingdom will determine the quality of their spiritual experience. So one person who may have the privilege to be mentored by a man of God who exposes him sufficiently to the ways of God, the principles of the kingdom, that gentleman will command greater authority in the spirit on the strength of the truth that he now possesses. So conferences like this, among other things, is a feast of light where God now exposes us to deeper and higher dimensions of spiritual reality so that holding them now as substance in the spirit, you will be able to do exploits even for the kingdom. So revival is not just something we continue to wish. No. 
there are dimensions there is an education that must happen upon you Jesus Jesus mentored 12 people 72 different groups of people over a period spirit of God upon their lives listen to this the church of the Lord Jesus Christ is not in ignorance I do not believe in time I do not believe that believers are in ignorance but this is what I think the problem is that the spiritual truths that we communicate they are not sequentially arranged they are randomly arranged so we do not know what kingdom mystery is responsible for what outcome for instance when a believer is in trouble it is usual to engage anything blood of jesus holy ghost fire the name of jesus we touch and agree we sow a seed we just hope that and one of them will produce the result but there is no mastery because you do not know what spiritual agency is responsible for what outcome are we together now so the moment you are in trouble you hear a sound in your zinc the next thing you try to pray then you add fasting then you call the blood of Jesus then you take communion do you not know that all of those mysteries have exact results that they produce it is dangerous to get results without knowing what you did because you will fear your own result the ability to reproduce it is not there so Paul says he that strives for mastery is not crowned except he strives lawfully is God helping us so ask the average believer how do I get to know God and hear his answer this is a revival series ask an average believer who has been in church for three five years and say I just gave my life to Christ what is step two what do I do here's what the average believer will tell you come to church every day and that's correct uh, read your Bible he will say and then for those who are a bit into spiritual things they try fasting make sure you are filled with the Holy Ghost and that's it what a poor understanding of the ways of God this is the reason why there is a widespread weakness within the body the body is supposed to be an invincible army of powerful people if mentored by a predefined methodology you watch people those who got born again in acts chapter one by the time you get to Acts chapter four some of these people were powerful do we have the intelligence that turns weak men to men of fire and power or are we hoping that in a group randomly one will just rise by his personal sacrifice most people who are on fire were not on fire because they were corporately mentored they just decided on their own to press into god and we will not be effective that way there has to be a corporate system all medical students pass through a system that has been predefined and when a student comes six years ago he was a naive student in the university six years later you call him doctor because there was a methodical approach to medicine this lecture is exactly why the book of first and second Corinthians came because Paul observed in his apostolic voyage strengthening the church he found out that the church in Corinth has such an outpouring of the spirit people were prophesying people were taking communion some were Prophesy. they didn't know the name of what they were having was word of knowledge it was Paul that named it so Paul brought order to the growth of the church today now you can create a Bible study manual out of that mentorship and teach an average believer that okay there are gifts of the spirit so if I'm prophesying now I'm a defined because I know what I'm doing but I hope you know that the gifts that were written in the Bible were not all that there is so who else puts 
to sequence the remaining that are coming because in this end time you will see dimensions of things that will look like error it is not error it is just another pattern it will require dimensions of spiritual intelligence sit down please is God speaking to us so the Bible says my son give me your heart then let your eyes observe it didn't say no observe first the dynamism of that way is something that if you don't observe you can miss it let your eyes observe the average believers understanding of prayer the I think the most the most um, I would say the most respected subject to the average believer is prayer now ask a random believer from any church it doesn't matter what and ask him what do you understand by prayer and you will hear answers like this I hope you know I'm not being sarcastic this is this is a convention for the body of Christ someone will tell you it is an instrument for deliverance he is right another person will tell you it is a principle that helps me to release my faith to get my needs met he is right another will tell you well it is something that if i want anointing in my life and i don't want to be small i saw my pastor praying every time so it's now gingered me to obey the, the gaps in our understanding is the reason why our growth is not sequential so we do a lot of things it is also the reason why there is weariness in the body because when you are doing things not by understanding you are just copying because someone you respect was doing it a time will come you will not have the stamina for continuity patterns if you meet a doctor right now let me have one gentleman here, please. Come. Please stand here. Now, stand, stand. Don't worry, it's not impartation. <laughs> Watch. You know, every time I call people like this, they are always thinking anointing, anointing. This is our generation likes power. Now, watch this. Watch this. Look at this gentleman. Do you know if I am a doctor, let's say I'm a consultant, as this guy sits in my office, and he's busy giving the story. Oh, doctor, I have headache. And then yesterday, I began to feel weak. I said, doctor, I'm not concerned about what he's saying. I'm looking for patterns in what he's saying. It is that I have been trained to observe those patterns. And my diagnosis will be based on those patterns. So whether he's speaking broken English or he's speaking whatever, I am looking for the traces. Okay, headache, weakness in the body. And my mind is going to my notebook this most likely will be typhoid and my recommendation will be based on that and because i have done it for many years i have gained mastery i can give him a guarantee take this and return back home can we do that for spiritual things can someone come to you now and say who looked at the sun this is geography except you are no longer a christian because this is in your Bible. The Bible says the things that are written are for time. They are for our learning. So that we through the comfort of scripture might find hope. Joshua stood and told the son, stand still. Because there is a battle to be commanded. Imagine that that happens over a nation. There will be more salvation in one day than we struggle to create out of this begging people, please be saved. No, no. The gospel is the power of God. And if it is true that it is the power of God, that power should be demonstrated here and now. Please listen carefully. The Bible talks about angels who threw physical hailstones. We talk today about the ministry of angels. The average believer does not even have an idea of the ministry of angels. I'm not just talking of someone who is inclined to the prophetic. 
and can see them or see the similitudes. An average believer, in spite of the fact that they were sent, the Bible talks a lot about them. The average believer has no idea. Look at this. When Gabriel appeared to Mary, Mary was not surprised at the angel. She was surprised at the salutation, not the presence of the angel. In fact, the Bible says how that in Acts chapter 12, when Peter was brought out of prison, when he went to where the brethren were paying, they opened the door and saw him. They closed it back thinking it was his angel. God, take us to higher levels. We are tired of this. And you know, brothers and sisters, listen to me. It is this little we do that we boast of. It is this little, I am Apostle Joshua Selman, a great man of God. What is the achievement? Oh, someone is shouting while I'm preaching. Someone is falling while I'm preaching. Congratulations. But this will not bring the glory and the power of God. There is a demonstration of the reality of heaven on earth that will happen before Christ comes. They call the apostles Zeus and Hermes. When you study classical Greek mythology, these were gods that came as a result of the aberration of these spirit beings with women. There is a dimension of kingdom authority that until we bring this talk of revival, when you read about the world's revival under the leadership of Evan Roberts, the Bible says that the power of God, or not the Bible history, that just carrying the newspaper alone to read about the revival, right there and then the power of God will break out. Like reading, you are reading. And yet we write books all the time. And people read our books and the only thing they write out is what we, we said that was wrong. And nothing happens to them. Oh God, you are my God. It says, early will I seek you, Psalm 63. My soul longs for you. My flesh as in a dry and a weary land to see your power and your glory as I have seen in the sanctuary. Watch this. If this guy has Qatar, a running nose, Medical science tells us that if I stand close to him sufficiently, it is possible that I will receive it. Now, the Qatar does not care whether I'm a Christian or not. It doesn't even care whether I have faith in it or not. It vetoes whatever I believe and enters my nose. So why can't I stand near him and the healing comes to him? If sickness can be transferred, doesn't it make sense that divine life and health can also be true not by corporately praying this guy did not intend to give you the kata there was just proximity watch this listen please listen please listen we claim we have the life of god we claim the zoe life we're a generation that understands greek and hebrew and yet you shake someone and his life remains the same yet you go to someone's shop and if say God bless you and even drop a tract and nothing changes but the Bible says the apostles they waited for the shadow of Peter not the shadow of Peter when Jesus came into your home you were already rejoicing because whatever the problem was in that house you knew that it was gone why don't they rejoice when we come to the homes of people because they know nothing will happen. I'm shaking off what you have called Christianity and opening you up to a new dimension of hunger. That you are not just praying because you want to find a sermon so that your contemporaries will think you have revelation. There is a hunger that can drive you to say, God, there has to be more. I am tired of this in the southeast in enugu state lord there has to be a portal of revival that is broken within this city to the point that people go to god only when charms fail i hope you know that for the average believer going to god as the first port of call is not it the moment people are in trouble 
they honestly say lord i love you i've not denounced you i'm only being wise wisdom is profitable to direct because we have a track record of being noisemakers in the name of jesus i command that power it is done and the person goes right into it i'm not being sarcastic i'm planting an anger in you someone is praying because demons are oppressing him and you finish dry fast and on the third day as soon as you are finishing you want to take a nap for five minutes the same demons come again as if they didn't see you praying something is wrong do you know you've heard my story do you know that years ago even as a preacher demons used to oppress me i would finish preaching and because of the prophetic i will watch them enter my room like you are opening the door you are entering did i believe a false jesus i will shout blood of all the th all these things you shout holy ghost fire blood. nothing happened they had no regard for it whatsoever i said something is wrong because this bible is not a lie that means that there is something i'm not getting if you don't understand what i'm saying the days that are coming will test your conviction and god is saving you from dying like a chicken in the hands of a harsh reality that is coming upon the earth i prayed for people with hiv they were not healed though i prayed for people with cancer many died i prayed for people who were buried I even felt the anointing. Absolutely nothing happened. I prayed for people on wheelchair. They spoke about me, a mighty man of God. And when I went to those homes, I saw that they had faith. And yet I prayed. I called on Jesus and nothing happened. People will come to me and say, I'm trusting God for this. And I'll pray for them in the name of Jesus. And I see them one year later. Absolutely nothing has happened to them. I said, Lord, I can't be a preacher like this. This is the kind of state that will make you envious, angry. You will fight yourself and fight every other person when you don't have results. Either you bring me to the reality of this substance. I cannot be preaching things that I don't have the grace to defend. God is this. God can do that. I speak over people. In the name of Jesus, may your life change. They say amen and nothing happens. Through desire, a man having separated himself, there is a requisite level of hunger that brings God to you. When you casually cross your leg and say, God, I'm in need of you, as if you are calling your mate, you will never find him. He more, hunger is a magnet. There is a way your hunger can, can reach the heavens. And God knows you mean business with him. I got to a point where I was dissatisfied with church not in a negative way I said if the sick continue to be sick what if the person sick is now my relative there has to be a way out the more I read my Bible I was I, I, I was I was almost confused something is wrong people would call me and say pray for me they said you are a great man of God and yet absolutely nothing will happen and listen men of god i say this with all due respect you have to love god enough to throw away your ego or just keep telling them you don't have faith because the truth is those people have faith the fact that they came to you when a patient meets the doctor he has done his own part the remaining is the professionalism of that doctor otherwise how do you raise a dead body that cannot believe whether it can come back to life or not my son give me your heart and let your eyes observe my ways when you go to a herbalist watch this don't go there in the name of jesus christ you you can you can glean from what you have learned from nigerian film all right when you go to a herbalist the first thing he does is to listen to you sir 
and broke and while you are talking he's laughing what do you want i want a lot of money it's not going to say go it is done he will tell you okay based on your request he has been trained to know what pattern creates that outcome because the, it's all a manipulation of spiritual laws so he will tell you for what you want you will need a goat you will need a chicken you need one bag of beans you need a you will need to bath now he is not guessing he has been trained to know because those patterns create an altar in the spirit and they bring the spirits that back men to have that outcome are you getting what i'm saying now yes sir so you go and do what he asks you to do and then you get up all of a sudden you put the little charm in your shop and suddenly customers begin to come and you too you are watching with shock your neighbor who does not like you also comes to buy it and you say wow this thing works and yet the bible says once have i spoken and twice have you heard that all power belongs to god that means there is an accurate spiritual way of routing these mysteries to the point that see it is on the strength of what i'm teaching you that the bible says for we know that all things work together because if you have been delayed for instance there is a spiritual pattern that is responsible for restoration and if you can engage it even your years can be restored are we together when it was time for the animals to come into the ark what did noah do that made him not to go and look for those animals by themselves they started coming two by two seven by seven if you know what noah did you can do that for members in your church if you know what noah did you can do that for finances in your life what mystery did noah invoke he just stood near the ark and on their own volition they kept coming because we see that jesus used the same pattern he climbed a mountain people followed him there he went to the valley they followed him there our world is immersed in mysteries and these mysteries are responsible for predictable outcomes are we together yes, sir. when you know this after this conference you will run back home and stand in front of your gate and make an announcement to the realm of the spirit that this is no longer the ignorant person that went I, I went for a conference now I know what to say to sanitize the spiritual atmosphere you are not guessing you know that this is the secret the day I found the key to my liberty I ran back home and I stood outside and I begged those demons to come I didn't cast them I pleaded with them until tomorrow they have refused to come the light shines in darkness truly the light shines in darkness if it is really light it will shine in darkness I remember the day I caught the revelation of the healing ministry I prayed for a woman on phone this was somebody who it was a gentleman I meant to say now I, I'm not a doctor but you know when your spine is broken completely broken they call it something fracture I don't know what the name is I remember praying for that gentleman then phones just came out and they started doing a, 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 a I think then night call or something like that I prayed for that gentleman when that gentleman was healed that thing shook the teaching hospital because they brought the x-ray you cannot deny this they were already preparing to bring a consultant from india miracles are not gibberish if it is true it can be proven scientifically that one miracle that happened i remember praying for at least without exaggeration may god forgive me if i'm lying at least 17 nurses and doctors because when people discern that you really have results they will start opening what they have been hiding and say honestly let me tell you even as a doctor i have problems too help me they are keeping quiet because they are not sure we have a solution i 
I made up my mind and I told God if you truly want me to serve your purposes to a generation please give me understanding and put something upon my life that will grant me the grace to demonstrate this spiritual reality let me not come and teach and people are in bondage and they share the grace and go back and then they say Joshua Selman came and the worst part of it is when people now begin to sow seeds to honor you they honor you based on the perception that you have invested something in their lives and if you have not invested anything that is fraud we are desperate people we want more more love we are desperate people. We want more, more love. We are desperate people. We want more, more love. We are desperate people. We want more. Please stand here. Let me have maybe three or four other people come. Hold on, hold on, guys. Okay. Just. Okay, take it easy, take it easy. Just spread yourselves. Just spread yourselves. Just spread yourselves. Now, watch this. Listen. Hey, hello. Let's, let's save time. Watch this. I want to demonstrate something for you. Watch this. Let's call this, we are going to call these different results that the average believer needs. Let's call this healing. Let's call this restoration. Are we together now? let's call this uh what do we call it now fruitfulness let's call this spiritual fire and hunger are we together let's call this passion for god let's call this um speed let's call this church growth now watch this do you know that in the dealings of god with men all these dimensions are a possibility but every one of them has a mystery please give us matthew chapter 13 and verse 11. jesus began to teach and he was introducing the disciples to a concept in the kingdom and he called it mysteries he says because it has been given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom a mystery is a hidden code of operation is a body of light that is privy to a group of people for instance the army have their languages if a military man speaks to a fellow military man if you are not a military man you may not understand it's a code of operation we call it a mystery there is a way a wife will talk to her husband if you are not within that family you will not understand what they are saying is that true with respect to a foreigner the Igbo language is a mystery because while you are speaking it the person will not understand it is not fruitful now watch this in the kingdom we engage mysteries to rise the mysteries are a body of spiritual knowledge given to the saints that produce victory here and now in the life of the believer it is on the strength of these mysteries that we command dominion watch this so i am in need of church growth as a man of god i desperately need church growth what then is the mystery that supports church growth the spirit of revelation comes to me now and begins to lead me to scriptures like i if i be lifted up from the earth i will draw all men so i'm seeing a key there that for as long as i'm promoting myself god is not committed that the more i lift up christ he himself will draw men i now begin to study the gospel of mark and i see the wilderness ministry of jesus the bible says it was noised abroad that jesus was in town who noised it we do not know there are angels that announce things when jesus was born there were angels that came and met shepherds that were watching their flock by night that means if you are a real shepherd you should not only watch your flock by day you have to watch your flock too by night because it was while they watched their, a night time is not a convenient time of watching flocks it is the sacrifice of watching your flock by night that expose you to the ministry of angels so if you only shepherd people while it is convenient there are dimensions of god's grace you will not access you must be willing to watch over your flocks by night 
These are principles scattered. John 4, 48. It says, except ye see signs and wonders, miraculous signs and wonders, you will not believe. So I then know that there is another piece to the puzzle. That for as long as people come and they don't have the opportunity to experience the power of God, they may not be motivated to stay and be planted. And so I go back to God, who is the giver of this power, and cry. Are you seeing all the ingredients now? I combine these ingredients like fried rice and I produce an enviable ministry. I'm trusting God for speed in my life. Maybe I got born again at age 40. I hope you know that's already delayed your life. Congratulations for being born again, but that's already delayed because it takes a long time to know God. When will you get filled with the Holy Ghost, pray in tongues, get mentored, and then grow? And yet, I must catch up in life. Then I go to the scripture and I find it written there that I will restore the years, not just the things. So time can be restored. That there is a way of exerting dominion over time. And I find out the principle. Jesus Christ told the disciples to saddle the boat and go. They were six hours ahead of him. And then he was praying. And he was six hours late. You would call that delay. But when he got up, he started walking on water. And within a short time, he met them. That means my contemporaries can go ahead of me. But there is something I can do while they are going. And when I get up within one year, I have caught up with them. But do you know that secret? Listen. Listen to me. This gentleman is trying to produce results in his life. You went to school as a graduate, no job. All your loved ones, no job. You went to do your masters, no job. There is a dimension of fruitfulness. The, the understanding that sponsors fruitfulness. Listen, do not use your results to define God. God is higher and bigger than our results. If I die today, God forbid, it still does not mean that long life is not a reality. Let God be true and all men be liars. If you really want to know God, you must be able to be open-hearted and receive of all that he is, even the dimensions beyond your current experience. We have built theological explanations around our pains and our limitations. And by it, we have limited God. Do you know that there is a way I can suffer in life suffer so much in life when someone talks about favor I'll be angry with that message because that that reality has not been captured in my Christian experience I am used to suffering before I get things so when you say God can change your life overnight I call it nonsense the Bible says oh taste and see the goodness of the Lord can be tasted and it can be seen so this gentleman is looking for fruitfulness. Apostle, I'm trying to get a job. There is no job. And then you go to the scripture and find where the husband man was looking for laborers in his field. And he saw others sitting and said, why sittest thou idle? He said, nobody employ us. Immediately he spoke. They got something to do. That means there is something you can do, my goodness and my God, that overnight it will be like a charm. There are people who understand these mysteries. They will never spend three months without a job. If you don't know the mysteries of the kingdom and you hear those who understand them, you will think it's pride. It is not pride. They are speaking based on the certainty of these things. Let's look at Luke chapter 1. We are going to pray shortly. Is God blessing someone? The Christian experience is a plethora of frustrations until you understand the ways of God. God is covering the gaps in our Christian experience. Luke chapter 1 from verse 1. We are reading the first four verses. Can you see it where you are? Okay, if you can see it, let's, let's do our best to read it. We are reading from verse 1 to 4. Ready? Read. For as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration 
of those things which are most surely believed among us uh-huh even as they delivered them unto us which from the beginning were eyewitnesses take note and ministers of the word now verse 3 it seemed good to me also having what had perfect understanding stop there a man can have perfect understanding of scripture perfect understanding of all things from the very first to write unto thee in order most excellent to your fellows why verse 4 if you are a christian that thou mightest know the certainty of those things wherein thou hast been instructed i do not want you to just believe it because i'm a man of god and you believe me i want you to get to a point of accuracy where you know that this is the key that controls this outcome i want to say something that looks like i hope it's not mistaken for pride may god forgive me and you forgive me if it sounds like pride but when i began ministry i found out i really could not point many men of god sir that every region seemed to receive them i found out that for most ministers it was only their region that received them and received of their ministry that in one region a man can be so received and loved and then in another region he can be so hated and castigated i said but the gospel cannot go far that way there are men of god who if they go outside africa nobody seems to receive them others if they come to africa nobody receives them others if they go to the south or north or east or west and i said lord there has to be a difference and the lord showed me a mystery and when i found that mystery i said every region will receive of my grace and it is true by the grace of god today and with all humility there is no region not in this nation not outside of this nation that has not received this that god is doing to the glory of the name of the lord be careful when you use your experiences to define god all you have experienced is not all there is come up here there is always more come up here now my question to you tonight is which part of these mysteries do you not know because that is the part that authorizes the reign of darkness in your life if you desire revival if you desire a life that demonstrates the power the glory the grace of god my question is what part do you not know this takes a lot of humility because you see just because you are excelling in your finances does not mean your health is all right most times we use one area in our life where we are doing well to just make it look like every area is doing well and we will not pursue the areas where we are yet to see the faithfulness of god hungry people are those who say thank you lord jesus thank you for the teaching anointing you gave me i'm a sound teacher but i need a grace for performance because i'm saying a lot of things i cannot defend i thank you for giving me the teaching grace but in addition i cry and i covet for the sake of your glory the grace that brings a demonstration to those things which are said now this will bring completion to your christian experience thank god for the little that he has done in and through my life but i submit to you till today till tomorrow i'm still a student in the school of the spirit when i'm with the lord i say lord your boy has come again oh they call me apostle joshua selman they call me great man of god they call me miracle worker i call myself a student in your school you are the rabbi come and teach me i am passionate about the areas of ignorance in my life I don't allow this arrogant big manism of ministry to destroy me i am aware that there is so much i do not know and i humble my feet myself at his feet to learn his ways when i'm done with all these great conference and i have the opportunity to go back i say lord i'm back your boy is back thank you for what you did around the regions but i'm here let us learn again and the holy spirit says all right now that you are here the next lecture let me show you what you do not know and suddenly he will open your eyes to a dimension of spiritual reality
Swallow your pride Tonight come to the school of the spirit Don't you know In his hands are the keys to eternal life It's a little bit A little bit Soon your day will come He's at work in you Changing everything Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Alaska de Bashkana Catapranda Catacapo Catapranda Catapaco Tosco to break a take a look at her. The face of development, Lord, grant me the discipline.